So, okay, you ready? Okay, all right. Well, Governor Abbott, thank you for sitting down with us. It's our pleasure. Welcome to the Governor's Mansion. Thank you. It looks great. It's nice to see some touches of burnt orange. Well, some touches of burnt orange. People claim this is the Baylor room because there's green and gold on the couches here, but this is uh, the historic furniture that's been here in the mansion for uh, almost a century. Wow. Well, I heard you once recently say that uh, when you became governor, you had two tasks to accomplish. One <laughs> uh, was to fill our lakes, which I did. Uh, the other is for Texas to beat OU. So first year in office, very successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. And if you don't mind, if we can ask for item two again next year, that'd be great. If you uh, well, and, and repeat, uh, yeah. for uh, as many years as I'm in office, uh, we will continue to beat OU. Great. Let me ask you about when you first came into office, one of the first things you talked about as being a priority for you and for the state was higher education. Why was that a priority for you? The future of the state of Texas uh, will be governed in large part by the quality of higher education. Uh, we've seen the way in which, uh, e even though governmentally, California is not nearly uh, as effective as the state of Texas, California has been able to succeed because they've done a great job with their university system. It's unbelievable. It's, it's not just like Cal Berkeley. Look at University of California, Santa Barbara, University of California, San Diego. Uh, schools that a lot of people haven't heard of are ranked very high because they are uh, research-centric universities doing a great job. And I see the way that those research universities can create uh, the next generation of jobs. I want Texas to be the centerpiece of innovation, not just for the country, but for the entire world. And we can foster that through our universities. That's an interesting concept that you've, you've laid out with your Governor's University Research Initiative that attracting talent, attracting Nobel laureates and people like that can lead to an economic impact. What's, what's the connection there? Well, we, we've seen this tangibly uh, at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School in Dallas, uh, where they have uh, a large number of Nobel laureates as well as uh, dozens of National Academy of Science and, and Medicine uh, award winners who were there. Uh, and we see uh, the way that they are tangibly able to turn that into uh, monetized results, uh, but as well as to bring in uh, even better researchers and, and better students. We want to replicate that model at all uh, of our universities, let's say in the University of Texas system, but really at all universities in the state of Texas. And so we set up uh, this new uh, research initiative where we, as a state, provide matching funding for all of our public universities who are able to attract a Nobel laureate or a National Academy member who may go on to be the next Nobel laureate. We want in Texas to be the home uh, of the broadest uh, sector uh, of the best and brightest minds and researchers in the United States of America, and we are willing to put our money where our mouth is. Um, and when you, when you talk to administrators, when you talk to the universities, what's the feedback that, that they're saying about what that's allowing them to do? Well, they're very excited uh, because, for one, they, they see a governor uh, who is enthusiastic about what they are doing. Uh, they see uh, the possibility uh, of the vision of where they can take their universities. But I got to tell you something else that's, that's interesting, and because I made this promise, uh, I made this promise to Greg Finvez at the University of Texas, as well as to the other presidents of the universities across the state of Texas. I said, if you find a great researcher at some other school across the country that you want to bring to Texas, count me in as helping you out. And I will personally call and talk to that person and convince them to come to the state of Texas. And so I've, I've called researchers and professors across the country, and, and they are astounded to get a phone call from yeah. a governor asking them to bring their research project to the great state of Texas. And it's a very powerful effect. At the University of Texas at Austin, we have this mantra near scripture about the line from the Texas Constitution, establish and provide for a university of the first class. In practical terms, in modern terms, what does that phrase mean to you? Well, for me, uh, it, it means something more than just of the first class. Uh, to me, uh, Texas is and should be the best state. Texas should have the best public university. Uh, I want to see, uh, during my time as governor, uh, for Texas universities to be the very best in the United States. 
very proud of recent rankings that I've seen about the University of Texas. I've seen you know, various rankings like number seven publicly. I saw like number one with regard to petroleum engineering, number one with regard to accounting, uh, top 10 status of something like 40 programs at the University of Texas. Those are great numbers, but this is Texas and great is not good enough. Uh, we expect to be the best. And I expect the University of Texas uh, to go to work every single day with one goal in mind, and that is, what do they need to do to become number one in the nation? If you had to give the university a grade right now on that vision, 42 programs, graduate programs, ranked in the top 10 nationally, what does that equate to in your mind? Is it an A, is it a B? Well, I'll, I'll, give, it, uh, I'll give it an, an A. I mean, here, here's the deal. Are, are they making progress along the lines of what they need to do? The answer is yes. Are they there yet? The answer is no. But we're just in the early stages. It's like giving a grade for where you are in the first inning of a nine-inning baseball game. Uh, we are just now getting going. And, and uh, are they developing uh, the strategies to achieve the success they need to do? The answer is yes. Uh, they're starting at a terrific position. Uh, now they just need to continue this vision. Another one of the early things that you did as governor was to appoint three regents. Two were new regents, one was a reappointment. At the time, the board had been tense, there had been some strife. What were you looking for when you selected a regent, and what did you tell your appointees? I wanted to make sure uh, first uh, that all the appointees uh, shared my vision uh, with elevating the University of Texas to strive to be uh, the number one public university in the United States of America. Uh, I wanted them uh, to instill uh, the urgency of that vision uh, in their fellow board members. I wanted them to all basically be rowing in the same direction uh, to achieve that goal. And I think that they are achieving that. Good. Let me ask you about tuition. This is a hot issue nationally. The UT Board of Regents recently approved a tuition increase. It's been met with some lukewarm reaction. You've recently stood up in a, a multiple agency task force to look at affordability. What are you hoping to learn, or what are you hoping that they can chart out for the state? We have multiple goals in higher education. We want to see more students graduate from four-year programs, or it could be uh, higher uh, programs, you know, postgraduate degrees, uh, so that we have uh, a very highly educated state. One way that we do that is by making college more affordable and more accessible. And so we're looking for uh, cost, uh, we're looking for strategies to achieve efficiencies, uh, and so we want to thoroughly study what's going on at the universities to find out uh, what needs to be done to make college more affordable and more accessible to more students. Is there a balance somewhere in there between two goals, a goal about access and a goal about excellence? Uh, there is a balance, and our goal is to find that balance. Okay, well said. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything in particular when you think about UT Austin that you'd like to see it do differently or do better? It, it, the, um, obviously, it is starting in such a grand position. Uh, it, it is highly regarded uh, across the entire nation. And all I want it to do is to continue to find ways uh, of elevating itself. And it has to be broad-based. I mean, I, I talk to people around the country who are very impressed, and, and they bring up how great, let's say, the McCombs Business School is, or how great our engineering program is, or, or this school or, or that school. And uh, we just need to continue that. You know, as an example, one, one thing that we're seeing that I find very, very exciting is now the new addition of the new medical school on campus here at the University of Texas at Austin. That is one way in which the school is just going to continue to climb that ladder of, of great uh, position uh, among rankings uh, in the universities across the country. And so uh, we, con we continue to see the progress by the school. I just want to see that progress continue, but I want the school and the leaders to feel the sense of urgency that I have. Let me ask you about the Dell Medical School. It opens this summer. It's taking its first class of 50 students. What do you think this school can do for the state? It's going to be huge, and here's why, because the vision is much grander than that. Uh, the, the vision, of course, is to have a medical school where we train doctors and, and uh, people in the medical profession that we need. Uh, but also, uh, I want the state of Texas, and, and in particular a triangle area of which Austin is somewhat of a centerpiece, uh, to be uh, the leading region in the world uh, for life sciences innovation. And, and we intend to create a large research corridor 
adjacent to the Dell Medical School uh, that will lead to the next generation of scientific and medical advancements. Um, let me ask you briefly about campus carry. So SB1, which goes into effect in August, has been met with its own sensitive reaction. I think it's fair to say that faculty are not wild about it. And as someone who's as focused as you are on bringing that community up, what, it, what is typically your message to them? How do you help them understand why it's important or allay their concerns? I want them to look at the facts and look at reality. There, there is a concern that's been raised uh, by professors that, that if you have campus carry, a student could bring a gun into a classroom and assault a professor because of something a professor does. Here's the fact that they're missing. That uh, concern exists right now. Anybody can bring a gun into any place and assault any person, anytime, anywhere. What Campus Carry does is it only authorizes those who go through the special training and, and background. Uh, and, and if you look at the schools across the country, University of Wisconsin, University of Oregon, University of Colorado, uh, in states where this is already allowed, they haven't had any instances whatsoever. If I could be kind of pointed about this, it's, it's kind of ironic. We know that uh, the, I think it was the dean of the architecture school. Right, Fred uh, Steiner. Uh, left the University of Texas uh, because of this. <laughs> and he went to Philadelphia. <clears throat> he hasn't done any math. Because if you do the math, the reality is the probability of him being the victim of a gun crime just went up because he went to Philadelphia, which is far more dangerous than Austin, Texas. Yeah. So all I ask is look at the probabilities, do the math, and when you study the situation, you will see there's no reason to be concerned whatsoever. The Supreme Court has heard the Fisher case twice now, and I'm curious what your opinion or your observations are about this as former Attorney General. Do you think the university has the right strategy here, the right position about considering race admissions, or do you think maybe that it's time to look for a different way to, to handle this? Well, the university has been uh, focused on ensuring that they have a diverse student body. Uh, and they have, I think, achieved that, and they will continue to achieve it regardless of how the Supreme Court rules. One thing that I, I, I would like to see is, uh, I, I would like to see the University of Texas have greater latitude uh, in, in, let's say, the, the percentage requirement uh, of students that are required to be admitted into the university uh, so that they do have the ability to have the absolute best and brightest uh, at the University of Texas at Austin. And they will, I know uh, the attitude and approach of the University of Texas and that is they will do that uh, while at the same time ensuring uh, the diversity that is the trademark of the University of Texas at Austin. So you're saying the cap maybe lowering the percentage of the class that exactly. automatically gets Auto, okay. the, the automatic admissions cap. Uh, the University of Texas needs to have greater latitude. Even when they do that, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll see if, if you look back uh, to the diversity they had uh, before the automatic admissions uh, compared to what they have now, it's my understanding it was fairly much the same. And so we, we do have the ability uh, to ensure that we uh, will be providing high quality education uh, to students of every single background across the state of Texas, while at the same time being able to elevate the University of Texas at Austin to the very top. A couple more questions for you. Sure. Uh, I wanted to invite you, if you wanted to, speak to the University of Texas at Austin alumni community. If you had a message for them, what would you want them to know? This is a team effort. Uh, as the University of Texas alumni watch a football game, uh, if they think that it's one player who's going to win that game, uh, they're wrong. Uh, you have to have uh, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, defensive backs, offensive backs, coaches all working together. That's what allowed Texas to beat OU last year was a team effort. The same thing applies with regard to elevating the school as a whole. If you're sitting back in, in Houston, Texas, or South Texas, or North Texas, and think, well, it's just going to be uh, those uh, people in Austin, Texas, who elevate the school, you're wrong. This is a team effort that includes the alumni, and everyone has to get involved. Everyone has to get on the same page of urging uh, all of their elected officials uh, to support this cause. Uh, and, and the way they do it, uh, it is not to uh, necessarily uh, focus on the University of Texas itself, but to explain how elevating the University of Texas uh, is a way of elevating the entire state of Texas. Well, you mentioned the football team. 
What's your opinion about UT and A and M? Should the rivalry game come back? Yes. <laughs> Governor Abbott, thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. Appreciate it. Good to visit with you. Thanks.